Stana both removed away, because why wouldn't you against these guys? Gragas Yasuo still on the chopping block. So Curse Academy last time around added Cassidy into this ban list, and they're going to have to make, arguably, probably choose a new third ban here for themselves. We know Manglek will play the champion. So what do they add to the mix? Do they care about Hanser's Lulu? Oh. Wow, interesting. Manglek doesn't want to play it. Get out of jail free on that one. So Lawpro might get to play the same three bands. No, they add Cog to the impactful ban list. It means they have a different priority right now. Cog might for Stana off the field. So if you pick Lulu, most likely you're going to pick a first rotation AD carry here for Lawpro to take away a contested pick that's left up. Well, I think about it, though, and I don't know what else is on Heartbeat's pool that's so heavily contested. I don't think you've got to, like, rush pick a Corky. He could and say, hey, you know what? Let's bully the lane instead of trying to pick two hyper carries and you go for the, the big lane bullet everyone's playing in Corky, that could be fine. Uh, I think there's a good chance you grab Braum here because he's just so strong, but it really depends on what Lala Pro's plans are. Like, There's so many ways they could go that I can't easily predict here. You have to pick up... All right, they're going to go with the Braum. That's going to leave Bunny Fufu with Thresh and also Saint. Now, if he picks Evelyn, Elise is better in two-on-two -two skirmishes than Evelyn is for sure. Yeah. So the fact that he's going to be able to kind of dissuade that pick by picking up the early Evelyn is pretty big. So let's see what they go for. I do like the fact that Heaven Time went back to his Elise, though. He played so much of it leading into this game. The fact that he went for Rengar, wanted the rengar Ori combo, it didn't pay off. I like going back to things that did work for them when they were winning games. So one smart adaptation there. Cross Academy are going to grab some early lane aggression. Seems when Kog'Maw is gone, they say, all right, screw you, we'll win lanes this time. Cross Academy still waiting on their mid laner. Yeah, the Corky pick, I thought there was going to be a Corky or something along those lines picked up first rotation for Lol Pro. Yeah. Because there's just so many AD carry bands on the field, the top two. Yeah. Jinx is still available. Yeah. And that might be uh, what Heartbeat goes with. And keep in mind, actually, Ziggs was banned around last time, actually, wasn't it? I forgot about that one. That was a Curse Academy ban, if I remember properly. So I don't know where I got the Cassidy from then, or the rest of these, because I remember seeing Ziggs ban, right? Unless that was, was that Lol Pro that banned Ziggs away? Because I'm like remembering the bans back, and I was like, I could have sworn I saw Ziggs getting dropped. I think it was Lol Pro that banned Ziggs, because I think Curse Academy ran the same three bans. Lod's going to get this champion, potentially, which will set them up in a very different situation. Very high burst now for Lol Pro. Ziggs Bomb, Jinx Rocket. The chance for resets for Heartbeat is pretty high. This could be the makings of a very good team. Depends on their top lane, though. There's a lot of Wombo. Yep. Here. They didn't go with an Orianna to suck people in for the Super Mega Death Rocket. Instead, it's going to be a Mega Inferno Bomb, Super Mega Death Rocket, and also having the Glacial Fissure on top of it. Then they have Elise to just have some early game pressure to set up the lanes. We're going to have to see what they go with on Curse Academy. But the last final pick here for Lol Pro. There's a couple of things that could fit into the composition. We'll have to see what they end up going with because they won't have the Lulu. They're going to need something else. Well, looks like Curse Academy going to make almost no new choice here unless they were basically forced to. I do like staying with what worked. I also do like sometimes making big tweaks in game two because your opponent's like, prepare. Okay, we're going to fix all these mistakes and you come back with new things they're not ready for. Sometimes it'll throw them off, and you've got the extra game to lose in the first place. But Curse Academy going to stick with what worked last time. And they think Chris can definitely dominate with top Lulu here. So Team Law Pro to fit their comp together. It looks like they really want to team fight. So do you split push against Lulu and hope that works, or do you have someone who's going to readily pull himself in and be part of that 5-on-5 battle? Well, Lulu is most effective when you're grouped up in a team fight and you're helping somebody else. That's usually where she shines. Yeah, true. I mean, if you get the Lich Bane second item, then you can do you can take down some turrets pretty quickly. Yeah. But I think depending on who they pick in the top lane here, it's most likely going to be a Lulu that shows up to the fights and plays that style for Chris. I mean, for for Lol Pro though, I'm like thinking what what their choice is now against this because you know Chris Academy have stuff that's that's worked so far. You could go ahead and play Rise. Mm, uh, yeah. You can group up for the fights. They're going to go with a frontliner. Yeah, Mundo and okay. Shibana would be the two that I could think of. Mundo's actually seeing a lot more play recently, yeah. especially against Lulu's and AP-based compositions. They may get a Morella knock yeah. on, but it's still not a huge deal. It is, it's this weird mix of, of synergies and anti-synergies, because as you mentioned, right, Morella Namicon is such an easy buy in a top lane mid, or sorry, a top lane mage, 
and you're like, oh, but these Grievous Wounds are so easy to grab, they're going to run Ignite in the mid lane, oh, woe is me, I'm Mundo, but at the same time, the thing with double AP comps is they're burst focused and pretty low sustain damage, especially a Corky in here for AD carry. There's not a lot of sustained damage. So if Mundo survives the front wave and goes lol ult regen, suddenly your life is pain and Curse Academy can't get through him. So you're right, I do like the Mundo pick here. It does make sense with the double AP team. We'll see how Hanser does in the matchup. He was going to win this fight without jungle intervention, but Saint made Hanser's life miserable. We'll see if that happens again here in game two. Another big thing with that too is you talked about the Corky. There's so much magic damage here for Curse Academy's composition. Mm -hmm. And Lol Pro, they're in a really good spot with that Mundo in the top lane. As soon yeah. as he starts getting the Spirit Visage, it's going to be first item rush, no problem. Then he stacks on a Banshee's Veil, maybe a Warmog's, right. and just keeps stacking on magic resistance, and then he's fine. Yeah. He doesn't really have to care too much about the Corky damage. And the cool thing as well is this works for Elise on top of that one. You can just finish your Golem or Spectral Wraith and go right into Locket and have no qualms about that whatsoever. And uh, you have pretty obvious build paths and very smart build paths here that can really ruin the mid game of Curse Academy, which is where they shown the most, actually. Curse Academy got their lanes ahead, but then made play after play after play, picking up Dragon, setting up Baron. And if you cut that off, by being unkillable, suddenly you've got a much better chance for Lol Pro, who I felt were playing largely well as a team until late game when they started falling apart just because they were so far down in gold. I think the early game had a lot of hiccups for them. The first mm -hmm. blood, then the fact that the top lane too far up, blowing flash is very haphazardly, not taking advantage of the fact that Man Clouds had his summoner spells yeah, down, true. bullying him. There's a lot of dis different things here they didn't take advantage of. They didn't kind of leverage the pressure or little, the little pressure points that they were given. They didn't push on them. Instead, they were like, all right, you know what? We'll wait until later. But, oh, we just got completely just stomped yeah. halfway through. Yeah. It's well, very hard position. Law Pro, guys looked a little bit bad at the end of the first game and maybe just because they were so far down in goal. But they've got to regroup right now if they want that buy in the postseason and guarantee a top four finish in the playoffs. Of course, top three will make promo tournament. But it gives them a pretty good shot if they can make it here. So... Law Pro looking for the comeback win. They need two straight victories here. Yeah, that's a big thing I actually want to talk about is that the teams are just walking out right now is the fact that both these teams are in playoffs, but a first round bye means you are at least in the top four and 75% of the teams in top four make it. Mm -hmm. Only one of them who loses a third, fourth place match ends up not facing an LCS team. Yeah. So it's consider... a first round bye. Chances are pretty damn good. I'd buy a lottery ticket on that one. Yeah, three, three fourths is pretty good odds. Uh, and I mean, think about it. It's just fun to think about the brackets as well. Um, with Coast already getting the first buy, we know they're going to be top two. We basically know that one of Coast or Lol Pro or Curse Academy are going to be in the promotion tournament. 100% one of those three teams will be in the promotion tournament. Maybe all three, potentially. Uh, maybe two, maybe three. We'll see. It just depends on how it all shakes out. But you're going to be seeing more of those teams. Mm-hmm. You're going to be seeing more of Team 8 as well, as well as Wasabi Gaming. See them in a quarterfinal. Look at that. Both teams just walking through each other's jungles, putting down all the wards. But Lol Pro, they walked over a ward from Curse Academy. Where's the setup? They all might be right on top of this blue buff. Uh oh. Oh, it's the hook. hook across the wall in Heaven Time. has got to be real careful. First Blood goes over to Corky. Kurz Academy were there the whole time. That single ward that was placed over and the vision game was so good by Curse Academy. They end up picking up a first blood again in this wow. matchup. The level one outplays strategically so good from these guys. And of course, keep in oh, mind, heck. they can go for some damage on a Hanser there. He's going to lose some health as well. Heaven Time just getting back to the lane. Curse Academy don't commit for it. But of course, there's no spot on the other side. Yeah, that's true. But Heaven Time, he has to get up here. He also has no flash. So that little two-on-two -two skirmish, if it ever happens, mm -hmm. having that flash is pretty important. Yeah, maybe not able to chase down St. Bitch or anyone else. Chris will TP in on this top lane. Plenty of consumables now in the inventory. Of course, you can ward against Elise, so he'll have that sight ward for himself. Hanser did pretty much the same thing, TPing top lane. Now the two-on-two -two looks like a very large wave here for Curse Academy. They're going to be level two pretty soon. Yep, there it is. Ooh, that was nearly on the Braum. That was close. A little bit earlier than you would expect because of the first blood. Pack will miss two CS. Ooh. But he also got first blood, so it's all good. Yeah, Seven I feel like CS you're okay. up. 
I want to see how he cashes that out, actually, because you can go for the early recall on Phage, and you know you're going to be an item ahead of Heartbeat, who's going to have, like, if he recalls, a Doran's Blade. Uh, and I think it's a really good way to continue pressure on a lane matchup. Corky's already going to win that normally, but now you're like, I also have 20 extra AD. It's really hard to deal with. Yeah, and then you have the movement speed on top of it. With the Thresh, if you do get a hook in, it's very hard to escape the Corky that early on. Already forcing him under the turret. Jinx actually one of the better turret last hitters, though, so that doesn't necessarily deny very much. Yep. Heaven time spot out by a ward by Man Cloud. He has to back off this matchup here. Curse Academy can take it home with Law Pro even up the score. Let's see, they do have some good wave clear here and Wombo Combo in their composition. But the fact they already gave up a 500 gold lead to Curse Academy might just be tellings of basically a repeat of last game. Well, absolutely. I mean, level one first blood's always a really rough thing to deal with. Curse Academy keeping the pressure on. Is worth pointing out, Hauntzer's doing well against Chris so far. Uh, Hauntzer did, honestly, again, aside from St. Vicious, reasonably well in the first game on top of that one. So that is one matchup I feel Law Pro can continue to rely on. And Mundo is, of course, a great, reliable champion to have. He's going to keep putting out damage in fights. He's going to be hard to kill. So maybe Law Pro can wait it out. Their actual late game in general is also very strong. So if Law Pro are able to be a little bit patient, you know, not fight dragons they shouldn't, this could be a game that Law Pro can win just by waiting around and not giving up any advantages. Look at all this vision control here. We actually heard Kez talk about it. He rushed a Sightstone second item after his jungle item mm -hmm. on Evelyn. Yep. And the fact that so many wards are being purchased on the side of Curse Academy this early on, the pink ward on the right side jungle, the ward that's up a little further, they're trying to protect Man Cloud in the middle and make sure that he doesn't get put behind because we talked about it in the pregame. This is the matchup you have to watch. Is yeah. that mid lane. Whoever gets ahead has a huge edge coming into the later game. And we saw how much Man Cloud did with that lead as well. The gigantic roams making kills happen. There's a double kill bot lane because of Man Cloud coming down there, uh, as well as a bunch of turret pressure. So, yeah, it's a thing to keep in mind pretty heavily on both sides. But Saint looks for the top lane right here. He says, you know what? There is no Elise around. And this the cool thing as well with, with high level jungle style, which is you can play a game where you're saying, you know what? My lanes are all winning. If we just keep the laning phase going stable, we'll grow a giant gold lead. And if that happens, your goal as a jungler is often to just keep tabs on the enemy jungler. Mm -hmm. right? Saint's goal can just be find Heaven Time at all times and dare him to battle. Right? Be around for every counter gank. Keep all his jungle camps down. Keep him under level. Put wards in. And then you keep your team safe by this sort of preemptive counter jungling or preemptive uh, counter ganking almost. Look at that. You just wasted like five seconds trying to repel there. Five? Close. A little bit of an exaggeration there. Okay, two or three. Yeah. Whatever the repel time is. I said about. Okay. Then or like. Round it to the nearest fifth. Why not? Heaven time, though, does not. Oh, now he does. He walked by that ward and out goes Chris. He's like, whoa, guys, I'm out of mana. I'm going to whimsy this one. Heaven time can't get anywhere for that one. Yeah, the ward coverage is just too good. He gets him. That hook, though, is pretty awesome. Foster Bomb blocked by a shield there, and it's impactful. Trying to do a damage he can, but he was on the other side of this one, so there's really nowhere for anyone to go. First kill picked up now, Patoy forced to run. I'm not sure why he waited around so long, though. Second hook comes in, and oh no, Patoy, you are a very much a dead man. Bunny Foo Foo wins a kill on that one. You gave Bunny Foo Foo Thresh, you're gonna pay for it. That brilliant hook there with the directional fake out of Thresh. But oh, Hanser top. Ignite is on Hanser, just barely lives though, Heaven Time. A little bit too late, but the roam, all ready for Man Cloud. Didn't need a kill, didn't need to do anything, but just. Decided to leave his lane and show up. Yeah, he went for the roam there, and Laud was a little bit behind him, but couldn't contribute to the fight at all. And actually, I want to go back to touching on the bottom lane here for a second, because the hook comes out, and there's just so much damage on him, and it looks like Heartbeat actually wants to go and take the lantern or fake out impactful into clicking on the lantern and taking it instead. Yeah, that was strange. A little bit of an overstay. And the thing on Patoy and Heartbeat is that they haven't played together for very long. They're both new additions to this team, despite being in this environment for only about three weeks, mm -hmm. at the longest for, I believe, Patoy. Heartbeat is a very new addition. He's rarely scrimmed with them. I was talking to Lot, and he's like, I was like, is he good? And he's like, I don't even know how he fits into the team yet. <laughs> They just haven't had enough time yet. Yeah, and it's un un unfortunate for the team, but of course they made the choice themselves there. They think it's going to be worth it 
in the long run. Of course, as we talked about, they are in the playoffs. So if they can improve their roster or improve their synergy over time, then, well, we'll see better things from them in about a week's time. But Actually, yeah, we'll see them in the third place match or the finals in a week's time. So for sure, we'll, we'll see their, their next test soon. Hook not quite going to land. No gank yet for St. Vicious. Now, we are seeing significantly less pressure out of Saint, but again, he's keeping oh things from happening. God. Now he's going to show up. Harpy's got nowhere to go. Kill picked up. Patoy, only level four. He does have flash and exhaust. I don't think it's worth using it, though. Wow. So I'm sitting here, and I'm thinking those might have been some next level mind games. I think Bunny Foo Foo might have walked up, even a little bit of the benefit of the doubt here, throughout the hook, because it didn't look like it was going to hit. And as a Thresh main, you know that one wouldn't hit unless they kind of like juked into it, mm -hmm. which was strange. Threw it out so that they thought the pressure was relieved. Came back yeah. in kind of in like a power vacuum, because they knew the hook was down. And then he flash flakes. Exactly. It's a huge setup there. Lod going to go try to go for the steal here. Does he get it? Ooh, close, but a little bit too early. St. Vich is going to walk away pretty happily. Look at that. Again, gets a ward down in the enemy jungle before leaving and saying, well, now I'll heal up, but I'm going to track heaven time some more. Yep, have a little bit of a present here. 5 0 first dragon over to Curse Academy. Mm -hmm. Not a turret. Knocked down yet. I feel right like side. Yeah, but I feel like I've seen this before. It's Law Pro without a kill, without a turret, or without a dragon pretty early on in the game. Whereas Curse Academy is on the scoreboard in most of those metrics. So. Whoa. The early game keeps going Curse Academy's way. Heaven Time's going for an invade here off of, I don't know what is triggering this. Because usually when you go for an invade, you have the information you need about the enemy. Maybe it's because St. Vicious was back. Yeah, but the it fact, was off the dragon. The fact that Man Cloud is also in that area and he still has enough mana to contest this. He still has his ultimate and his flash available. It's a very, very risky move and they didn't have complete vision of the area either. The thing is, that's the type of invade that's supposed to work. Like. I remember casting a bunch of games, it was specifically an EU challenger actually, a lot of the teams that are going to have to play the tiebreaker or, you know, around fifth seed, they would lose an objective, but they would just show up and go steal your blue buff, because they knew there's no one around to stop you, and that was a two-on-one, like, Mancloud warded and they said, never mind, but that was realistically a stealable buff. Well, Chris came down too, so it was a three-on-two? Yeah, but I, I feel like, I don't know, like, LolPro, I feel like are giving up so many advantages here. Like, I know they're a late-game team, but you still got things that you can do based on numbers leads, especially because all the kills are only on Corky. Like, this gold lead is purely in the bot lane. It's nowhere else in this game right now. Two on two. Well, Hansu's going to have to back away a little bit. St. Vicious takes a whole bunch of damage. Nice ulti comes across. Chris, does he want to stay in this fight? Well, Heaven Time's not happy with that one, though, and Saint does stay alive. Oh! Ulti not going to do much either. I mean, Hansu like left that fight so early, yet despite having plenty of health still around, Heaven Time kind of got baited in there. Wow. That was very, very close for St. Vicious, about twice between those two ultimates. But also at the same time, the cocoon didn't hit from Heaven Time. If he could have stunted that damage output for just a couple of seconds, it would have been possibly enough to give Hauntzer courage. Well, Chris wants this, has a red buff, has the Glitter Lance slow one shot, might have to flash out of attack. Oh! The red buff's gonna be enough. Chris takes the kill, Hauntzer. They're a little bit too long. First Item Morellinomicon. Yep. Gives himself the CDR that he needs and the healing debuff. Not that big a deal, but the red coming up big there for the slow. Yep. Takes it all down. Hauntzer does have teleport, but he's got 12 seconds on the revive, so this whole wave is basically going to be gone by the time he shows back up. And Chris says, you know what? I could do some real turret damage here. Yeah, he's going to go for it as well. At the same time, St. Vicious, he's visiting this bottom lane, TP up top, so they know that's not available. There's Hanser. He's going to get two CS here. The two caches go down for him. But Saint is basically making sure. Look at that ward. This is so good by Saint. He's taking his time to get ward control down, to spot the enemy jungler, to look for where ganks and counter ganks might come from. Sees Patoy. Does get seen there. Oh, W too early. I don't know if he's going to be too dangerous for him. Ulti's going to come out. They're really wanting this one. Lawpro, go in. Rappel's going to land. Can they get the auto attacks down onto St. Vicious, though? Ulti comes back to the counter attack. Exhaust is on. But we forced to jump away from this one. A man cloud. He wants in. Using his ultimate. In range for the charm. Good flash. Just gets Lawpro away. But they're going to lose a million gold under the turret and a couple of summoner spells. Yeah, Patoy with the flash and the stand behind me to get out. Man cloud with the aggressive plays. The, the jukes from uh, Fog of War. Yeah, it's a good play. It's good game sense. Very good game sense. That was four summoners and for one, that bottom lane fight. It was no kills at the end of the day. Both Patoys, Heartbeats, and Heaven Time's Flash for Just Saints. 
That's definitely a worth there. And that's going to be a kill, because you're now three flashes down. So next time Evelyn shows up, you're not getting out. And yeah, next Dragon as well, which is in two minutes. Mm -hmm. There might be a big fight, but Lol Pro, they just keep slowly but surely getting a gold lead creeped up on them by Curse Academy. It's just getting bigger and bigger. Yeah, I mean, Curse Academy the is... Ooh, Ooh that's going to have in time. Bunny Fubu does not want that. Not going to hop through the forest just yet here, but ward coverage getting removed. Curse Academy making these guys fight for every objective they want. But they keep the blue buff inside that brush. That will go... Maybe it a lot. It's healing now. They, they leashed it too many times. It's reset all the way. That was, uh... They got it now. Wow. The, there we go. It takes you as long to do a blue buff as it would a dragon. Thanks for dragon wasn't up. Yep. Looking at some problems there. Hmm. So this is the Curse Academy style, actually, is they are very focused on keeping a laning phase going. They, like, Chris Cat, they could very easily have taken this outer turret if they wanted to in the bot lane. Likely in the mid lane as well. They're keeping outer turrets up specifically to keep trying to outplay you in the laning phase. To keep getting the ganks in from St. Fish, which are actually working at this point. Four assists on him. And to let the roam plays happen a little more easily. They want this map stretched out towards the river so that they can keep picking you off for kills. Man, I'm having some flashbacks to Season 2 before Worlds mm. when everybody was like, all right, don't take the turret. Remember, people would rage at you yeah. for taking the turret. Why are you taking my turret? Especially as a jungler. I'd show up to the lane and be like, let's push this. They're like, whoa, 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 why are you taking my turret? Don't take my turret. This is nice. All the, nice the time. Yes. And then TPA came in, and it was like, why are they taking the turrets in five minutes? What's yeah. happening? And then it's like, oh, the aggression wins the game because you give less time for comeback. But Curse Academy, instead, they're like, all right, we're going to start investing in this laning phase and ch making sure you can't farm. And then we're just going to take all the turrets at once, group up with this huge gold lead we've accumulated, and then we'll just end the game off of that. So it's a different style here, kind of harking back to old times. That's the difficulty, though, is Ouch. basically Curse Academy, for their roams, they get a kill when they get a kill. And that's all they get. Oh, damage. Oh, Ignite. That's wow. a kill. There you go. Man clouds don't look at explosions. Nope. Walks right away from it. Has nothing to do with it. And Chris? On the roam over towards Lod. Good satchel charge, though. Minefield's going to push him back as well. Now Chris Academy are going to cash in a little bit on turrets here. Yep. Nope. Of course, pushing against the Ziggs is a bit difficult, but bottom lane outer finally does go down. Big wave there. And Chris Academy turn right around for Dragon. They get this one for themselves. Pretty easily, there's almost nothing in the vicinity. There is a Super Mega Death Rocket if he wants to throw it. But it doesn't look like it's going to come out. And down it goes, 16 minutes in. 8,000 gold lead Curse Academy. Ziggs bomb down as well for a couple of minutes. They're averaging about a 500 gold lead every minute. That's a lot. Yeah, if the game keeps dragging out, Lol Pro almost has no way back in this. They almost have 150% of Lol Pro's gold. That's a gigantic margin there. Yes. Haunter hitting a bunch of cleavers though. Like that was like three in a row that were like weaved through the minion line, which is really cool. But he's actually also keeping up with the matchup. Haunter's Mundo is working great against Chris, despite being the one who's been in gank. Saints got to be careful. Heaven time battling, but down a level. Elise having a really rough time here. Get some help from Ziggs. There's the ulti in from Lulu as well. And who's gonna win this battle? Haunter in the front lines. Lot's got to be careful of Man Cloud there. They are trading back and forth, but the Jinx rocket might push him back. They trade junglers here on this one, but Haunter forced a flash away. Oh! The Mega Inferno bomb. Takes up two, though, and Law Pro finally gets signs of life. Oh, Lottie. He just picked up two kills so easily there off the back of it. It's a three for one in the overall. They have to focus on this bottom lane, though. They do get the blue, and there's some little signs of life here for Law Pro. But, oh, man, they lose a turret in the bot lane, mm -hmm. and Bunny Fufu gets control of the jungle. But they do come up pretty big, considering where they were before. Well, again, keep in mind, all the gold for Curse Academy, like, the large reason for this lead is that bottom lane. It's a 3,000 gold lead on the AD carry, because all the ganks tended to work there. He was getting all the last oh, hits. He's getting ganked. He's getting Lod, uh, on. Good luck. Little Lance is going to hit. Lod's got nowhere to go. He's got basically no health either. Impactful. Actually, not going to land the rocket. That's a Valkyrie in. There is uh, the big one getting dodged. The dodge, the weave. With Whimsy, he's fine. Oh, he went the round. Ooh. All right. Fix it up. He's going to be OK. Gives the doubles over to Impactful, the little sign of life there. Yeah. The Law Pro just gets snuffed out so quickly. There's a good uh, rotation there by Impactful as well to show up off the bottom lane there and flank in on the Ziggs. So Curse Academy now grouped up with Ziggs off the map are looking at this mid lane. 
that goes down, and here comes the turret pressure. Heartbeat, 60 CS down on Impactful. Impactful just zoned him out during all the laning phase. Now he's grouping up and saying, I have this huge advantage over you. We saw him chunk in the laning phase. He has an entire Infinity Edge up. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Uh, margin. Trinity Force, but look yeah. at this engage. Uh, there they go. Big damage up a toy, but they're going to go back onto Impactful here. Heaven Time, though, losing a lot of his health bars, and Impactful's got to run for the bomb. Oof. Does get out. St. Vicious, only one to take any damage there. Of course, Academy not quite claiming anything off that. Just that one outer turret when Ziggs was gone. Hey, when you have Ziggs, it's very hard to siege up. Mm -hmm. Crack those turrets. So Lodge is doing wave clear. Almost getting Impactful there, but he's got another big wave of CS for him. Just a huge lead over Heartbeat. Heartbeat's really far behind. Really yeah. far. Yeah, and that is unfortunate for the new pickup. He's doing what he can, but hey, the Corky Lane Bully got picked up. Impactful and Bunny Boo Boo played it awesome, and lo and behold, Saint ganked a couple of times, and well, that's what happens there. Heaven Time still really not having a great series, though. I know he's a great player, but two really unimpressive scores in a row where I just don't see him do much. So there's some things here that we talked about in the pregame, where it was the full almost AP composition here for Curse Academy, at least the magic damage yeah. that was coming out from them. Impactful is 5-0-1-1. He is a big threat in terms of AD now at this point in the game. Yeah. So your power spikes are actually a little... Uh, Earlier and, yeah. and on the right people as well. I was, I was gonna say a little incongruent with what the enemy team would be building at this oh, point. Oh yeah. Because they're gonna be building magic resistance to counter Chris and Man Cloud. But then you have to throw in an armor item at this point. Hauntzer, he's got his work cut out for him. Because he's actually not as tanky as you would expect him to be against that Corky. Oh, Man Cloud can't stay for the pink ward. Yep, but puts the shield up, says, don't you even dare try to sweep this one away. So Law broke a pink ward control for a short time, but they are basically just scrounging what they can for awards, trying to keep something up defensively. Zig's only going to stop pushes, so. They are buying time for themselves. Lawbro do have some great late game, but reaching there is a difficulty. Now, fun little fact there. When you throw up your Unbreakable as Braum and you're on top of a ward, and they click the ward, it still redirects to you. Yep. So they can't kill a ward if you're on top of it, and they're ranged. You have yeah, that, your Unbreakable up. Unless you're Kale. Yep, that's true. Only champion, I think. Uh, Thresh 2. Yeah, projectiles. Yeah, they're, I think they're only non-projectile ranged champions. Like, I'm pretty sure Vel'Koz would get blocked. I actually don't know about Vel'Koz. He might also be like a laser, you know? I don't know. I don't, because I don't play enough Vel'Koz to know. Now I just feel bad for bringing it up. I'm like, hey, who's <laughs> the thing that I don't know about? But, you know, for what it's worth. Hey, hey, food for thought. Yeah. You made all those people out there think. The Vel'Koz mains are like, oh, my baby. But is it real food or is it is it fake? It's fake food. You're thinking about it. I'm giving you fake food for thought. Ah. Butoy takes big damage, though. The shield comes out. He runs back to Harpy. He says, you know what? You take the rocket. Harpy says, all right, I'll last at some minions, though, at least. Monster getting pushed around, still under this turret, but he's got oh, great CS. They go in towards Lod, big damage, oh, does land the charm. The Jinx Rocket is going to beat enough to take down Man Cloud. No, it's not. And now they're going to find another kill. Patoy goes down. Hanser is tanky, but does he have enough damage? Heartbeat trying to help. Gets hooked up, and they go for this one. They want Heartbeat dead. Looks like they will do that successfully, but Impactful has got to be maybe careful of Hanser. Flashes in for the Lantern, gets to it, but there's Heaven Time. Trying to chase on in. Hook's going to hit a Spiderling, so that is a kill picked up. Shield to Impactful. Heaven Time going to trade kills for that. Finally out of the scoreboard a bit better. 3-5-0. and zero. It's a two for one in the overall. So Lol Pro. You know, at least they're getting some kills for themselves. It was a prolonged fight. Man Cloud almost went down, but Chris had nothing to do with that fight. His wild growth's still up, his flash still up, so he'll be do it. good for the next part of it. Still hit Lod with the charm on the backside. That was really big. And the fact that Man Cloud didn't end up dying, even though he was burning, Matoy just gets shredded by Impactful. And this entire time, Impactful's damage, he just chunks Heartbeat. It's pretty much a Heartbeat. He's yep. gone. Hauntzer, Getting chunked down, but then he pops his ultimate and just gets back to a healthy point. Whereas Heaven Time, <laughs> Spiders came up big there. Yeah, they took did. that rocket for him. Yeah, so started was two for zero, ended up two for one. Heaven Time with uh, some good antics there and some some good clutch plays to get the bottom lane dead and shut down gold is nice to have as well. Hauntzer, 0 one and four, pretty tank. He takes a charm and basically doesn't care. And he has the war mogs now, so his regen yep. is really good between his passive and the passive of that item. Merc Tread's coming soon, so we won't even be CC'd for long. Ed Ponser 
the guy to watch here, and maybe Heartbeat can clean up. Hook there onto Patoy. Dragon going down. Will get picked up by St. Vicious. He's done well for this one. The battle has begun. Lulu ulti onto the front line. Saint doing whatever he can. Patoy forced to run away. Jinx Rocket does not do much damage. Heaven Time the first to fall. Now Hanser on full retreat with the rest of Law from it. Here comes Man Cloud. Charm just barely dodged away from, and out they go. There's just barely any damage here between Heartbeat and the rest of the team of Law Pro. Laud, he doesn't even have his second item completed. But at the same time, he's not that far behind. He needs the Rabadons to start doing some decent damage to the rest of the team. Yeah. If you look over at Chris, he already has his Rabadons. He already has his 35% cooldown reduction. Yeah. The big issue for Law Pro's team comp, if they don't basically get a big AD carry, is they don't have the ability to chase kills down. They don't have much lockdown in the first place. They have some, but uh, when St. Vicious takes a Lulu ulti, he has the freedom to walk away if he gets low. And Hanser's not fast enough to chase him. Uh, Law doesn't have the damage to burst him. And Heartbeat certainly can't run for it. He's too afraid of Ari. And this lets Curse Academy really kite out these fights and keep them all alive as they get, as everyone else gets worn down by Impactful and Man Cloud. Yeah, and Heartbeat, the difference between his gold and Impactful's right now is really big. 811 for Impactful, 214 CS, 40 CS lead. Heartbeat, 140 CS, 0, 3, and 3. The disparity in items now. The completion of Berserk Greaves. Yep. Then Sheen, Phage, and the completion of Trinity Force. And Adoran's Blade on top of that. And a Vamp Scepter. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of damage coming through. I actually hope it's Ruin King that comes out for Impactful, by the way. I know everyone's been, everyone's been running Bloodthirster, but I personally like Ruin King more myself for the damage output. But, you know, whatever. I it, feel like whatever he builds will be fine. Void Staff comes out now for Man Cloud. He actually wants to try to pressure in Mundo. Yeah, he wants to blow up Mundo, but at the same time, I do think that it might be Blade of the Rune King, because against the Mundo with so much HP, it would be a little more effective in right. the damage department. Right, and, and again, it would especially make sense in this game. I just know a lot of AD carries have been risk averse. And I feel like Impactful like bought Banshee's third last game. I feel like I saw that. Maybe I'm wrong on that one. Um, I remember seeing it maybe in the LCS today, but either way, some pretty risk versus AD carries. Now going to be the scariness now. Chris forced to flash away, pops ult. He takes a ziggle, though, on top of that one. Hauntzer still in the chase. Great cocoon from Heaven Time, and now Chris has to be all kinds of careful. Hauntzer finds the pick. Charm on Patoy is a lot of damage, but he's going to walk out just barely. Summoner heals burned by both people. Keep him alive through the ignite. And meanwhile, that was actually a three on five because in the bottom lane, Bunny Fufu and Impactful are pushing a turret. Well, if that means a turret for a kill, that's kind of okay for Curse Academy here, but you gotta be careful not to trade too much away as this fa structure falls down. St. Vicious now, gotta be careful. He's on the wrong side of the map as well. Hanser doing plenty to stop him down. Another cleaver lands. St. Wait to get a teammate in there. Finally, in shows the Ari, but still, ulti in from Hanser. St. Vicious, couple hits from dead. Oh, he missed One the last more cleaver. shot to go. Flashes, lands the auto. The Jinx rocket not gonna land, but now Man has gotta be careful. Hanser just doesn't take damage. He might get a two versus one double kill. And now Chris has got to be careful. Also in the wrong spot. Hauntzer with a triple kill now. Four, one, and four. Heaven time, though, going to take a bunch of damage. He's in the wrong place at the wrong time. But Patoy might just save him with the gigantic shield. Oh! Knocked up impactful. They do get away. Patoy might lose his life for it, though. And he does. But what heroics by the Brahma Patoy. Wow, that was crazy. Hauntzer ends up getting about a two for one at the same time. Three, actually, on one and he ends up with two of those kills pretty much solo. They do get the Baron, but they lose an inhibitor because of this push from Impactful, who was one of the biggest factors I talked about in taking down the Mundo because of his build. So Hanser refused to oh, die. In. The tanky Mundo might make it a very delayed pentakill. Zigzult comes by. Cleaver hits Bunny Fufu. Impactful real low as well. There's the flight. I'm sure a hook's coming soon, but I don't know if you're going to do much for Hanser there. He pops the ulti. There's a shield. He whiffs Impactful, but I feel like he's going to force at least a flash. He's got super low cooldown cleavers. Look at that. Two seconds on them. They're going to pick up Bunny. Boom. He goes down. Oh! It's anyway! It's going to hit him regardless. There's the Glittle Lance and Hanser. Can't complete the delayed ace, but still, that is four kills in a row picked up for just Patoy going down a little while back. Hotzer got himself a thorn mail too. Yep. So he's in a great position now to scale up into the late game. This is why Mundo has just come back into the meta as this huge, crazy beast, because all the top laners right now are AP oriented currently in the meta. We it's see not... a lot of Lulu, see a lot of yep. Gragas, see a lot of magic damage from Needly. Yeah, and keep in mind, even though I feel like this pick of Mundo isn't so much for the lane, but for the team fights, Hanser has been up in minion kills the entire game. 
He's actually found ways to just last it with Cleaver, stay safe, make the right choices, and stay above Chris. The problem is he lacks turret pressure, which is why, again, the laning phase is actually weak, even if you do last hit minions. And that gold that Chris Academy's gotten from Chris's pushing is helping them stay ahead. And Hauntzer, he actually has 290 HP per five right now with Baron on and no ultimate. Yeah. He is rocking that Warmog and the extra HP in his passive. Just He can pretty much duel anybody on the map right now. Three levels up on Chris. He's got to run, though, because Impactful's in the wings. Put some damage down. Great little ends. There's the ulti coming across. Goes for the knockout, but can't quite land it. Haunts with the running with the ulti. 140 health per tick. Uh, he's not going down. He's got a call. He's a very busy Mundo. He is. He's got a beating to run through. He's running a little bit late. Starts it. 28 minutes. With his ultimate, he's got 1,400 HP 5. That's a large number. <laughs> yes. It's pretty much every five seconds I get the HP that uh, Corky has. <laughs> hey, man, this Corky's 9-1-1, one, one, though, so he's been... Emergency help for the team. Well, Plenty of people, though, getting caught up by Cocoon and the South Shard Heaven Time just takes him down right away. And, uh oh Curse Academy, their kill and neutral objective focus is starting to falter when they're kill getting killed back. Hey, two item spike here for Heartbeat. Nobody on the team first Academy really has a lot of armor, so he's actually good without the last Whisper currently. And there's the Super Death Rocket. All right, good spike from Saint, though. Can he get away? He does have Flash. He's going to use that Bunny Foo Foo down, so no Lantern for the guy. And heck, that is a kill for a Dragon. The funny thing is, that's good for Cursed Academy, as weird as that says. Yeah, Curse Academy are going to come out on top with that trade, but there will be a turret being taken in this mid lane now. Never mind. Better for Lopra. I was wrong the whole time. Hans are going to run to the base. Should be able to keep this turret alive. A lot of magic damage here, and some minions take extra magic damage, so he'll start shredding these down pretty quickly if he throws the weavers out of them. Exactly. Negative magic resist on supers. Hans are also, one thing that's cool, but I kind of realized a few months ago, even though percent health abilities are capped against neutral monsters, they are not capped against minions. Cleavers destroy the crap out of super minions, as do things like Neurotoxin, etc. So when you see those like gigantic Ruin King procs against, uh, or Kog1W, it's like 150 damage, it's yeah. great. They're gone. They're pretty much just gone. A very tense game right now between both of the Curse organizations, Challenger teams. Lolpro has tools to get back into this game. Yep. Off the back of Hauntzer, and the fact that they're buying time for Heartbeat to start getting damage items. And nobody on Curse Academy, like you said, mages are burst oriented. A lot of sustain here from Hauntzer, and he's the highest level in the game now. Very close to that 18. Second highest is Mancloud at 16. So Hauntzer very close to 200 armor. The Last Whisper does get completed from Pactful. Smart choice after realizing that the Mundo is getting pretty big. I do still want to see Rune King come in last, so I think he really needs that to make uh, his damage, as some would say, impactful. And Name some would reason. say, shut up, freak. Yep. <laughs> no, no, I'm just no, no, that's... <laughs> don't, don't apologize. You're allowed to diss me on this cast. I do it all the time to you. Yeah, that's what the others would say, though, if they didn't say it was impactful. They'd be like, ah, rah, 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 rah. <laughs> No, I wouldn't. That's fine. <laughs> Man, Hauntzer just being the huge frontliner. He's yep. zoning everybody. And you're seeing how much it's stopping Curse Academy. Like, this Curse Academy team does not, like... Game 1 Curse Academy, in the first 15 minutes of this game, looked like the same team. And then Hauntzer got a triple kill, and they stopped trying so hard because they realized how scary this Moon do is. Like, every single time Curse Academy goes for awards, someone's there to say, no, don't you ward this. And they go, you're right, I'm sorry, Mundo, bye. Over and over and over again. It feels like it's been a really long game, but it's only 31 minutes in. We're just seeing a lot of action, and like we're seeing a lot of phases to the game. Yeah, and you're also seeing a lot of people capitalize off of... Uh, Kills. So you're kind of like, all right, we killed you guys, but we get one tiny thing. It's not huge capitalizations like we're going to rush your base and get three turrets. Yeah. Like, all right, we got one turret. All right, we got one dragon. We set up for Baron. We play the reward game. Yeah. But here's the thing that's actually really big. It's the fact that all of LoL Pro's kills have been on defense. Mm -hmm. So Curse Academy are making these great roaming plays, these great pushing moves, and they're up seven turrets. And that's awesome. LoL Pro, all their kills are like, oh my gosh, we defended our turrets. We defended our territory. We reset the map to equal, but they have not picked up turret kills in a very long time, which makes it hard for them to cement their lead because all they get is, well, 900 gold for two kills. The man cloud bush being checked there from Lol Pro Baron. In a minute, the hook onto Fatoy. The front line is very beefy of Lol Pro. It's allowing Heaven Time 
to build damage. You're seeing a blasting one join the inventory. It could be Riley's, which is an interesting choice. Um, Saint looking for the flank onto the back line. If he can get through that Mundo and they ignore him and just take everybody else out, oh, man. might be the key to victory here. Impactful took a bunch of damage, and Bunny Poo gets the Kudev. They're going to go for this one. Impactful is oh. so low on health. He's got to back away. Saint will oh, play with a rocket. Takes down Corky. That is not what you wanted. Bunny Poo takes Cocoon as well, and Lawper are going to keep on going. Mancloud is exhausted and is running Hanser Pops, the ulti, and probably heals against this turret. Not going to care whatsoever. Jinx going to put the damage down, and Heartbeat finally gets the Wombo follow-up. One, three, and six. This team will keep on moving. Finally, they get the minions under control. Finally, Lawpro can take kills and actually push with them. And with the Jinx, they're going to be able to take this inhibitor as well. Are they going to push any more? They might just rush the Baron right after. They've got a minor minion wave to keep them uh, occupied in the mid lane, and out they go. Baron is the target here. A great ward on the retreat, and this will cement their uh, comeback much more closely. They're down 7,000 only right now. Be close to 5k after this. Are they going to set up a bait? There's no way Chris Cadmi should check this. I feel like they should just go for the inhibitor in mid. And they might go for just that. St. Fish is off on the side. Baron wow. isn't actually being started up yet. Lol Pro are really pensive there. That is, They could have rushed this down 100%. Whew. The fact that Saint was in the wings, though, gave, gave them a little bit of hesitation. No impactful, no bunny foo foo. Instead, they're just going to wait for those guys to back, clear that top wave, and then they'll be able to re engage this. Super Mega Death Rocket once again available. That last fight, getting impactful off the field almost yeah. immediately with the Super Mega Death Rocket and the Infer Mega Inferno Bomb was huge. And that's the worry of being a mid-range AD carry like Corky, who has to land auto attacks to do his job because Moon is just too big to die otherwise, is it puts you in range of champions like Ziggs, players like Lod, of hitting you and doing some initial damage and saying, hey, check yourself or your life's going to be painful. The fact that there is no locket still for St. Vicious. He's itemized his own stats over, you know, an aura. You've got gigantic magic damage dealers. Ziggs, Elise, and Mundo, all very relevant magic damage, but no locket for the... No, oh, sorry, it's on It's on Bunny. I'm stupid. I'm just like, the entire point is falling Oh, apart. they caught Heartbeat. And that is not good, but he's going to get away just barely. And now St. Vicious in the front line, taking a bit of pain. Jinx Rocket comes out, but doesn't do much damage. Heaven Time forced to run away. Hanser still tanking up in the front line, but forced to run away maybe soon. Heaven Time just flashes away, but now Hanser, look at that one. He's safe. He's good. He's safe. He's out of there. He was regenning so much without even his ultimate up. I thought he yeah. would at the start of the fight because Impactful was auto attacking him, but he was doing nothing. Look at how healthy he is once again. You know what's funny is the total damage dealt in that team fight was probably more from Curse Academy. Oh, yeah. Problem is, so much went on to Hanser that that's fairly irrelevant. And there's the Moon to win a double AP. He had that one amazing battle where he got the triple kill, and it pushed him so far ahead. Curse Academy can't deal with him. There's no Void Staff still from Chris. There's no Death Cap still from Mancloud. And those are items that I feel like are required to break through this Hanser window. Yeah, the lack of a Void Staff on Chris is pretty big. But at the same time, Mancloud has his, but his AP isn't as high as it should be. Hanser? He has so much magic resistance right now. Oof. 200. Yep. And the way these battles work is interesting because Mundo cannot force you to hit him. He is moderate threat, but not super high threat that you that you have to, have to, have to go for him first. The problem is Curse Academy can't really reach the back line. Mancloud has to give so much respect to Cocoons and everything else that he can't just go for a heartbeat. And Batoy blocks it anyway with his shield. Uh they went for the top turret here from Lolpro. That leaves their bottom inhibitor exposed. And, and the mid lane mid. potentially as well. Chris and Mancloud, of course, have great wave crew, and the team is coming in. Lolpro, late recalls from the AD carrying support. Hanser Patoy are going for a flank here, and actually the vision is on them. They know that they're around oh, there. Oh, no. They can get picked up. Bunny Fufa going to walk right onto that guy. Hooks going to land. Hanser barely even gets CC'd for any time at all. Patoy going to land the knockup. They're just bursting him out. Just unimpeded damage and impactful can burn him down. Hanser taking the wrong way into that fight. Their ticket back in was just ripped up for a second there. Yep. Going to have to go ahead and get those pieces back up. Try to tape them together. Heaven time, do you want to look for the steal? There is no way out. You've got Repel, but no Flash. St. Vicious in the Baron Pit as well. Good harass coming across. Heaven time, he's going to go for it. He he's going to go for the wrist, but doesn't oh. land this fight. St. Vicious, great claim there. Heaven time going to get ultied up into the air. He's got nowhere to go, but Toy will fall down to Impactful, and another kill comes through. Team Law Pro could lose the game off this call. Went for the Baron for Curse Academy, and Law Pro 
They're getting flanked now by Impactful. Gotta be careful, though. Uh, if he dies, seconds. they can't close the game. There's a TP for Chris. He wants bot lane. He's got a Lich Bane. Heartbeat and Lod are actually still pretty weak. Comparison to where you think they would be at this point in the game. A lot of risk aversion, though, for Chris. He can get. Some, okay, he's finally getting the damage down. He actually sent the entire team over there for that one. Instead of pushing mid just yet, they could move across. Patoy dead for 12 seconds. Heaven Time dead for 15. Haunter. Curse Academy. Haunter's a lot of to Haunter. Looking for the chase. Looking for at least the poke on the way out. Oh, the Cleavers keep on hitting the slow swell from Jinx and Curse Academy. Actually, don't get the mid lane inhibitor turret either. They do get a 10,000 gold lead. And they are safe to walk on back, pick up Dragon, and they can buy up items again. It's pretty much been a 10,000 gold lead all game True. for Curse Academy. And their ability to close the game out has just been stunted by Haunter doing so well in that top lane. And just building appropriately against this team. That's the really the big thing here, mm -hmm. is that his build and the fact that the double AP composition with Corky, who has a lot of magic damage, yeah, but I gotta give credit to a lot of the guys for stepping up here. So obviously yeah. Impactful's gigantic. 11 2 and 1, he's doing great. Picks up a quick server sash as well, just to make sure he's not getting caught by cocoons. Uh, but Heaven Time has really, I think, stepped up a fair bit. He started the game, I believe, 0 4 and 1, and has come back to 5 7 and 2, which is uh, quite the comeback when you consider he has all of basically one tank item, and he's trying to participate in these team fights now with the Void Staff and everything else. And he's really done a much better job now in this mid to late game here. And the rest of LOL Pro, I feel like, are rallying around pretty nicely. And we'll see if they can keep this up and, and maybe get their way back in. Of course, in recent past, Curse County did get a couple of picks and they got Baron, but maybe LOL Pro can hold on here. Hanser's not there. Hanser is shoving the bottom wave out as best he can. He's TPing to a minion now. Cocoon on a Saint. Bunny gets a caster minion with his hook. Not nearly as important there. And the Ritter on the wings is not going to get the charm on a Haunter just yet, but there's the Banshee's up. broken, and there's the dive on in. Can they burn him down with the Ignite? They're trying to, and Haunter does fall first. Bunny Fufu -Fu in the wings, barely catches Harpy with that hook. That's a dead 80 carry. The Mikhail's comes out too slow from Patoy. This will be an inhibitor. The flash hook not quite going to land for Bunny Fufu, -Fu, but they've still made their way in. Haunter off the field. Oh, the flash. flash charm for Man Cloud will claim Patoya in the back lines. Impactful has been life stealing up and actually survives against Heaven Time. Uh, that's going to be Lod dying as well. This will be GG on top of this one. Curse Academy just have to take down the buildings to close this one out, but they will take the semifinal 2 0. They beat up their younger brother, and put Law Pro into the third, fourth place match against Team 8. And Curse Academy, they're going to be here in person next week trying to take on Coast. And they're going to go for kind of an. an uh, an avenge battle now against Team Coast. He already took down Lol Pro the last time around in the, in the finals. Now it's Curse Academy's turn to take a swing at these guys. And hey, look, Curse Academy, a small fault for the mid game, but I gotta say, their early game is so freaking good, and their ability to keep the neutrals under control is by and large awesome as well. Yeah, every time we see Curse Academy, we always talk about how good their first seven minutes of the game are. Mm -hmm. Even when it was a different Curse Academy <laughs> That's team. true. <laughs> it was like, oh, Rux's first seven minutes of the game, his decision making is great, now it's a completely different roster. Sure. And Curse Academy's first seven minutes of the game are fantastic. And yeah. they play it perfectly with the facilitation of St. Vicious. And also the fact in that late game, the targeting haunts are a little too far forward at one point. Yeah. Two, actually, a couple points there. And then the flank and not being conscious of where the enemy team had vision mm -hmm. was really the the nail in the coffin there for yeah. LOL Pro. And it is so hard to play from behind for like 25 Big minutes. props to them, though. Yeah. That was I mean, huge. They got a lot of picks back. They defended all the ward spots that Saint kept going for. You saw pick after pick after pick saying, if you ward this brush, you're going to get satchel charged or hit up by a Braum Q or something. So that was very impressive by LOL Pro. Yes, two, basically exactly two missteps. Uh, by Hanser, otherwise an almost immaculate game by him, and he put the game on his back as best he could. Um, unfortunately, though, for Lol Pro, bot lane got really far behind. Heartbeat was always an item behind Impactful, which is a significant margin for an AD carry. That's a difficult place to be in. Yeah, a little bit more than a single item, too. It was really just this huge disparity between them that was causing all of this just bulk of damage mm -hmm. to be in on one team's favor and not the other. Like you had this gigantic tank in Hauntzer, Yeah. But then you had the persistent damage threat of impactful on the other side. And it was kind of like the unstoppable force, immovable object yeah. beating each other. And then 
Unstoppable Force came out on top and impactful. Yep, and that was really good. The Corky did great. The ganks all worked out, and it was thankful for these guys that all the kills went onto the Corky. They didn't get grabbed up by Saint uh, or by Patoy, if I'm remembering the players properly. Uh, nope, Bunny Fufu. There we go. That's what I was going for. But either way, right, just Corky got fed, did a great job, and of course, a wonderful game at Curse Academy and a 2 0. So after today's matchup, the finals are set, guys. Curse Academy advances to the Summer 2 finals to face Team Coast live in Los Angeles after the LCS next Saturday, August 22nd. Second. Second. Wow. <laughs> and I read even, two numbers there. And even though they fell short today, don't worry, I got you back. Team Law Pro will compete against Team 8 for third place on Friday, August 1st. But before then, there is, of course, a super amount of LCS games to tide you over. On Tuesday, the European LCS kicks off the final Super Week of Summer when Gambit faces the Copenhagen Wolves and Rocket Battles Alliance. Then the Copenhagen Wolves face Fnatic, Millennium goes up against SK Gaming, and Fnatic battles the Super Hot Crew. It all starts at 7.30 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time, 4.30 p.m. Central European Summer Time with the LCS preview show that you don't want to miss. Of course you don't, and of course with that though, We've reached the end of our time together tonight. Before we go, I do want to say thanks again to our friends at Coca-Cola. And now for myself, Zyrene, and the entire live broadcast crew, thanks for watching. Good night, GG. We'll see you in a day and a half.